How is everyone doing? Um, and yeah, technically, this talk is inspired by The Matrix. If you've seen the movie, you should know what I mean when I say there is no spoon. But we're going to go through it. So yeah, um, this is a chat GPT generated image. It's not too important. We built out Machangura, which is a service that allows you to send and receive Bitcoin without an internet connected device, right? Yeah. So um, the um, service works via USSD, just similar to mobile money, and then you can send and receive Bitcoin. It's a custodial lightning wallet, uh, custodial Bitcoin wallet. Next slide, please. And yeah, if you're in Ghana, you can just dial, or if you have a Ghanaian SIM card, you can just dial the code star 920 star 833 hash, and you are presented with the Machangura menu. Register an account, confirm that you're registering an account. That's it. Now you can send and receive Bitcoin. Your lightning address is your phone number at 8333.mobi. Next slide, please. It also works in Nigeria. Different code, though, so, but same interface, right? And the good thing with it, well, sure. the good thing with it is basically is the same interface in any country, and you could do whatever you want with it from that perspective, right? And send and receive Bitcoin. Um, oh, we are also available on WhatsApp. So if you don't have a Ghanaian SIM card, you just scan this QR code and then you are able to talk with the Machangura text interface and then also create your account. If you are from any country in the G20, come talk to me nice and then I'll whitelist your number because yeah, we re generally recommend you do self-custody if you can afford and to use that service. Uh, so yeah, that's me in an animated format. So you may have this emoji on your phone. I actually modeled to be a part of the Unicode system. So yeah, thank you. And now uh, this um, album is called Apologies in Advance. I'm a huge rap fan. I, I grew up on hip hop music. And I love this album because it's an album focused on self improvement. Right? And it's themed around an AA meeting but it's apologies in advance. Right? My favorite song on the album is called Best Me, and the hook is, just says, all I want to do is be the best me. Right? And one of my favorite lines in the whole album is, I might fuck around and be the best me. Right? And that has been what I've been trying to do ever since I started um, listening to this album. And so, why USSD? Why not just make an app for people to send and receive Bitcoin? So, um, I want everyone I know to use Bitcoin. What usually happens is I walk up to a person and say, oh, let me send you some Bitcoin. They say, ah, I don't have a smartphone. If they do have a smartphone, they say, ah, I don't have data. If they do have data, they say, oh, I don't have space. So how do you solve that? You just give them a USSD number and then they are able to send and receive Bitcoin. And so that is also part of the reason why we did the WhatsApp interface because they, if they do have a smartphone, most likely they have WhatsApp, and they, but they may not have space, but they could chat with a new contact without using up space. So that's why we have the USSD interface. And the other reason, weird enough, is that um, of all digital payments across the African continent, 94% of them are done via USSD, right? So if you're in fintech, most of the time, every fintech that wants to do good volumes will also have a USSD interface. If you're a bank, you will have a USSD interface. Same thing for South Africa, Nigeria, and well, Kenya has mobile money, which is better because uh, payments are a network type of thing, right? For, you, for me to send you a payment, you need the ability not just to receive it, but know that you will be able to send it as well, right? So yeah, that is why USSD. And yeah, over the years, I've read Human Action three times. This is one of my favorite um, aspects on the book. Uh, um, Ludwig von Mises says, animals are driven by instinctive urges. Right? So he has a whole chapter about this, but I'm going to extrapolate what he said. A man who is unable to resist the urges of his in instincts is no different from an animal and will be treated as such. Right? So why am I saying that? Basically, we are in a world that is gamified. Right? And if you act out as you are triggered, you will be, you know, no different from an animal, domesticated all these different ways, right? So, challenges that we have had with uh, the USSD system 
is basically the main challenge is that no other service is building for people without a smartphone. Right? So I'm not an on-ramp, I'm not an off-ramp. I just give a person a wallet and I'm hoping and I'm praying that other um, Bitcoin companies then come to the party and say, okay, cool, we're going to support more and more people because it's an ecosystem. And one of the reasons why Bitcoin works so well is because most of the things that make the service work, like a lightning address, which is a human readable and human writable identifier, was not invented by me. Right? It was invented by Andre and Fiat Jeff. Um, Fiat, uh, Andre is building Zibidi, Fiat Jeff is building whatever he wants. And I could just incorporate that freely and happily. And everyone else is then going to you know, solve some other problem that someone else can incorporate into their stuff. So um, this was supposed to be a video. Uh, I don't think it's going to play. Right? So, oh, it is going to play. Oh, it's not going to play. It's just going to show Neo. Uh, but yeah, this is the scene where Neo sees the kid bending the spoons. And the kid then asks him, uh, you're probably wondering how I'm doing this. Right? And you shouldn't try to bend a spoon with your mind because that is impossible. Right? For a spoon to bend, you need to apply an actual force on it and your mind is not applying a force. Uh, the kid also said, what you need to understand is there is no spoon. Right? What bends is your perception of the spoon. Once you understand that, you can bend anything. And yeah, I basically wrote a blog about this uh, a few years ago, where now I was like, oh, the things I wanna build require so much money, how the hell am I going to build them? Right? Because I don't have that type of capital. But there is no spoon, right? The most important capital for me is uh, the fact that I can program whatever I feel like programming, right? And the fact that I can find an open source version of a component that I want to use. So there is no spoon in that regard. So um, then, uh, please, next slide. I think my clicker is not doing the clicky things. Oh, yeah, cool. Proof of valuable work. While I was still on the topic of there is no spoon, one of my friends is now a quantum physicist, right? He's one of the best published guys I know, Isaac Nape, um, from University of Vets, of Vets, let me just say that. And I asked him a question. I was like, yo, if you were to rank all the researchers in the world, right, and compare them to soccer players, which soccer player would you be? Right? And his honest response is, is he'd either be Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo. Right? So if you don't know, Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo are probably the greatest soccer players to ever play the game. Right? And my other question is, is he, is he, as a quantum physicist, being paid Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo money in the quantum, quantum physics space? And the answer to that is no. And primarily because he's a South African quantum physicist, he's getting paid what a South African quantum physicist would be paid, right? A lot of people in this room are doing magnificent work, but from a global scale, they're not getting paid what a person doing the same thing they're doing el elsewhere would be getting paid. Rockstar yesterday said, um, if Bernard was in America, he, his net worth would be 10 times to 100 times more valuable. But since he's, Nigeri he's in Nigeria building a Nigerian FinTech, or a Nigerian startup, his net worth is where it is today, right? So proof of valuable work. Are you doing valuable work? If the answer is yes, how do you prove that you're actually doing valuable work? You cannot be doing valuable work and be earning um, relative to what your country says you should earn because there is no spoon. There is no reason why you should earn what uh, is dictated by the border you so happen to live in, right? There is no spoon in that regard. And cash, right? So, yeah, what I'd like to see is more startups actually building out cash solutions, like cash-based solutions, right? Um, another stat, once again, 90% um, of all economic transactions on the African continent are cash-based, right? So, anything that's happening across the African continent um, is most likely a cash-based trans transaction. When we got to Ghana at the airport, the drivers wanted and insisted on being paid in cash instead of a card payment. Right? In South Africa, it's a similar, it's a similar thing, right? uh, especially for Bolt. Right? So yeah, uh, build and please use uh, 
cash systems uh, because that's how we would unlock the most people. That's how Mpesa did it. Mpesa technically didn't do it because it was a USSD solution. Mpesa did it because it set up a network of agents that could uh, onboard and offboard their users in a cash-based manner. Right. And they made sure they did that within one year of operations. Right. So yeah, that's something we're gonna attempt to do. If we are, um, we lose enough sleep, we're gonna do it actually. So, do you know how to paint a perfect painting? Anyone who knows the answer to this question, feel free to shout it out. How do you paint a perfect painting? It's easy. Make yourself perfect and then just paint naturally. Right? Yeah, that's the guy who said that quote. So it's a weird way to approach it. Right? So, you know, it's almost like be the change you'd like to see in the world, but in a um, crafty manner. Like, you want to build a beautiful and amazing system. You yourself have to be a beautiful and amazing person. Right? You want to build a divine creation, you yourself have to be a divine being. Right? And then whatever you build, you have to build it naturally. You don't have to force it. And cool, custody. Uh, custody is a problem, right? So we are a custodial service and we're trying to move up into self-custody by using the SIM card as a way to store the user's private keys and that is called Project Super Sane. And why custody is a problem? Because somebody will tell you how to custody people's funds, your regulators and your law enforcers will tell you, do this, hire this person, blah, blah, blah. That makes what you're doing Mm, expensive and less profitable. So yeah, so we're moving away from that project super saying I'll be talking about them more in Cape Town at adopting Bitcoin. And yeah, so if you want to come down to Cape Town, we're gonna be doing that from January 26 to 27, 2024. And yeah, it's gonna be a fun time. Uh, Bitcoin Agassi is also there. We're also gonna have an excursion to Mosul Bay for anyone who wants to see how the circular economy is being built out. Lutando from Bitcoin Agassi somewhere in the room, so just look for, oh yeah, there he is, uh, he's wearing the Bitcoin Agassi t-shirt, so just talk to him if you want to learn how they actually orange pilled the tuck shops in the township to accept Bitcoin payments. Cool, and Tupac, right? So yeah, Tupac is pretty much the greatest rapper to ever do it as well, and the interesting thing and the reason why I'm talking about Tupac in this slide is because he inspired Kendrick Lamar to make an album called To Pimp a Butterfly. Right. So, um, to pimp a butterfly was supposed to read similar to Tupac, right? but initially was supposed to be called to pimp a caterpillar. But then uh, Kendrick Lamar probably said, okay, hip hop has progressed since the times of Tupac. So instead of caterpillar, we are butterflies now because, you know, progression. Hip hop is now the biggest or one of the biggest genres in the world versus where it was when Tupac was doing it. But in the To Pimp a Butterfly album, one of my favorite songs or one of my favorite lines is a chorus by Belal, who's a singer. He's pretty much on every classic hip hop album. And he says, shit don't change until you get up and wash your ass, right? So there's a lot of shit across the African continent that needs to be washed away, and it will not change until somebody gets up and decides, okay, cool, we're gonna wash this away. But why I like the line, it emphasizes that most of that shit is on you, right? It's really not on anyone else, it's on you, and it's on where you are in the world. Cool. Um, yeah, so this slide is my last slide, by the way. So after I made the Tupac slide, one thing I was like, oh shit, um, the African continent, the outline of the African continent looks so much like a cocoon, right? And we're still talking about caterpillars and butterflies, right? So, um, and this reminded me about another lyric from my favorite poet, Ian Kamau, favorite rapper, and he says, we are caterpillars afraid to break cocoons we need to see more butterflies in the world soon. So yeah, the continent that looks like a cocoon right there is where we are right now. And hopefully we see more butterflies in the room and around us, just um, not being caterpillars anymore, progression. So yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Those are my contacts, that's the website. So feel free to reach out, email, um, Twitter account and website.